Good morning, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here from Maui, Hawaii. Uh, the stolen uh, islands in the Pacific from the sovereign indigenous people of this, 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 this land uh, from or by the Americans. Um, today, August 25th, 2021, a, a very short sharing, but length means nothing. It's the potency of the message um, for my family in Burma, especially the young who may very well be feeling anger and sadness and helplessness. For the people of Burma, my family in Burma, uh, we are relatives in Dhamma. As a son of the Buddha in a country with many different philosophies and religions, personally, the greatest gift of my life, unequivocally, to have been a Buddhist monk in your beloved country of Burma. The gift of traveling your country and seeing the breathtaking display of dana, generosity, unconditional giving so often over the decades of my life in your country, the incredible display of metta, loving kindness, of karuna, of compassion, of mudita, joy, people who frolic, evolve themselves in your happiness. And the beautiful states of mind Sobhana Chaitasika is a culture, not just a Buddhist culture, a Muslim culture, a Christian culture, an atheist culture, a Jewish culture, a heroic culture, a democracy culture, a freedom fighting culture, rooted in beautiful states of mind. Okay. There is every reason here on the outside to imagine the despair and the helplessness, the frustration, the anger that you, many of the millions of people in Myanmar, feel. There are so many that are incarcerated, many others who have been killed or assassinated, not just recently, since this, this military terrorist group run by the former general of Burma's army, known as Ming Online, and his State Administration Council, an acronym that should be understood uh, similarly to Boko Haram, the Taliban, uh, the Khmer Rouge, Al-Qaeda. A breathtaking display of greatness. I think that is something I'd like to reflect back to you, the people of Burma, in your moment of anger, helplessness, despair. If that be what you're feeling, know that there are millions of us on the outside and millions inside your country that although there is oppression and persecution and domination by this, this satanic evil terrorist group occupying your country at the moment, Mossack. Through your behavior, through your championing of freedom and human rights against unthinkable odds, you have given the gift of greatness to the world, to the youth, to the elderly, to leaders who have witnessed and who watch you 
a rare, rare gift in this world to see the beauty of your greatness, of grace under pressure, as Aung San Suu Kyi has often said, courage renewed repeatedly under harsh, unremitting pressure. The courage to keep on fighting, to keep on keeping on, to never give up your aspiration for democracy and freedom. I bring this up to reflect back to you the power of your behavior for us around the world to see and to feel and to associate with your greatness is a remarkable gift. It may not have the results immediately of peace and unity and harmony and the freedom of loved ones from prison, those who may be in hiding, those who have fled the country, those who have been displaced and refugees, but you are giving and you have given and you are giving continually the gift of your greatness through your behavior of courage, of compassion, of fortitude, determination. And it's a rare gift in this dark world to see such a display of power and beauty. You also, as you know, but to reflect back in this very brief sharing that's potent and from my heart, you have a history, a long legacy to draw upon of courage and grace and fortitude and determination and passion under pressure, under violence, under unremitting pressure and violence. You can reflect upon Uwithara, Uutara, great monks way back against all odds, fighting, talking, unifying, speaking up to the imperialist occupiers of your country, the British. A young man, Aung San, Da Aung San Suu Kyi's father, a young man, a student at Rangoon University, feeling the fatigue, feeling the outrage of being occupied by a foreign imperialistic entity and beginning to feel those stirrings of this is not acceptable, this is not right. We want freedom. We will do everything imaginable to empower our youth to rise up in unity and to fight back. And to think of that, a group of 30 that went underground to Japan, trained in anti-imperialistic tactics. And imagine walking the streets as a young student in Mandalay or Malmin or in Rangoon and doing what they did that you know as well as I do to interrupt the white supremacist occupiers and the, not too long after Burma has independence. You have a history of remarkable greatness in 8888 Coco G Ming online, excuse me, with so many of the great people, Da Aung San Suu Kyi, U Win Tin, U Tin U, who defied regardless the military orders to shoot and they rose up and brought Burma to the forefront of the world stage, an act of grace and conscience and luminosity and democracy. It's still today, 31 years, 32, 33 years hence, the world still looks upon these events and feels radically inspired. You're giving a gift to the world despite your anger and your despair and your sense of helplessness. It's a remarkable gift to us here in this world that we're dealing with the oppressors from all around the world. Medical tyranny, Big Pharma's tyranny, Xi Jinping of China's tyranny. You are in the footsteps of greatness in my humble estimation. Thank you for that remarkable gift. 
I wish I could bring in, smuggle, translate on my own the books that we've done, Burma's Voices of Freedom, not my books, not Fergus's books, but your books, the voices of your people who've lived behind bars, who have sacrificed the greatest sacrifices to bring freedom to the land, to the people, even to the oppressors and to the torturers. U Win Tin, U Tin U, U Win Tang, Da Aung San Suu Kyi. The list goes on. I interviewed over 100, 200 people, 300 people over the course of 35 years, more recently over the last 11 years. You have a legacy of unthinkable courage to confront injustice. You have voices of freedom in your culture. Very few of us in the world can say that about our own country and our own cultures. You are, although a small nation, you are large in your spirit, in your courage, in your determination, in your compassion. Draw strength, if I may encourage you in the most humble way from the outside. I know it's not easy. Draw strength from your inner resources. I am thinking right now, as you're probably thinking, what would Da Aung San Suu Kyi say to us, to you, if free, and she is free in conscience. Always remember that we're always free in conscience. She said that so many times to me, so many times to you. U Win Tin said it, 21 years in solitary confinement. They could confine my mind, no. They can confine my body, yes. But they could never confine my conscience, my dignity. That was never theirs to take. And to think of that level of resounding visionary behavior, what a gift to your people. What a gift in the darkness of your own despair to go right down into your soul and rock and roll with your reflection. You got truth on your side. Even presidents and prime ministers and members of the United Nations Security Council do not often have truth on their side. They've got privilege and power and wine and caviar and cars and pretend, but they don't have conscience and dignity, compassion, loving kindness, determination. They have forgotten the meaning of freedom and democracy. You have that. You have the greatest wealth of the spirit, conscience and courage and compassion. What a greater meditation could we ever ask for than to know that innateness at any given moment is yours and mine to reflect upon and to take in the moments of your despair. And I know it's not easy. And the outrage is right. Remember that as Martin Luther King encouraged us, sacred rage, what the white man and woman are doing to us black people, we are outraged. It's sacred rage because we have Dhamma. We have God in his terms. We have the spirit. We have Dhamma. We have conviction in the lawfulness of this universe in conscience and dignity and Kama and Karuna and Metta. You have those virtues that you can stand in and in that it sanctifies the rage into a Dhamma rage, Sun Vega rage, a rage of freedom. Your anger is absolutely legitimate because it's rooted in dignity, not in Kilesa. Empower it, preserve it, its power, its nurturing, no matter what. Soon I will release my audio book with Da Aung San Suu Kyi, our conversations from 25 years ago at her home in Rangoon in 1995 and 1996. They will provide framework of courage and voice and conscience and compassion and vision and determination we also, I also recorded the words of U Tin U and U Chi Meng in this book. 
I'm going to do everything possible to get these audio files into your country where they can be shared freely among the people, not my voice, but the voice of your leaders who cannot be heard right now except in conscience and in meditation. If Da Aung San Suu Kyi could speak, and if she's speaking, let us draw strength from our inner resources. Right now isn't the time to push the walls down. Or it may very well be if the Aung San gene or vision is part of your world. I don't know what's right here in this dynamic. If I were a young Aung San and the British were occupying my home, my soul, my country, oppressing us as they had done, and I was under the occupation of Ma Sak, the terrorist leader in Burma right now, oppressing the people, what would I do? There's parts of me, big parts of me, that would rise up in revolutionary fire and do an Aung San. I would take to the streets in underground ways. I'm not advocating urban guerrilla tactics to undermine, but read Nelson Mandela's book, A Long Walk to Freedom, and look at how he took the ANC from a long-standing non-violent approach to a selected violent approach, non-human oriented violence, but targets to disrupt the dictatorship, to disrupt apartheid. Find creative ways to translate the despair, the helplessness, the anger into making dictatorship in Burma undefensible. Erode the morale and the conscience and the competence, the toxic certainty of these leaders in Burma right now. Erode their false power make dictatorship impossible to survive in Myanmar. Creative ways, Sidigu Sayadaw, the Sangha can chant day and night, the Metta Sutta. There's nothing from presenting Metta as a 24-7, 365 vocation. They can march on Napidaw. They can sit in silence. They can refuse to take alms from anyone associated with the military or the police force. There's so many millions of creative ways to intersect democracy right now. You are a guiding light for the future templates of revolution and conscience and dignity in action. We are watching, we are feeling, we are with you. You're not alone. Yes, the leaders of the world are failing our own people in America, in the EU, in Canada and Australia. They are failing, fa failing themselves. It's the absence of leadership in the world today, not only in your country of Myanmar, the absence of conscious leadership worldwide. Look at the debacle in Afghanistan. Look at that. The outrage. It's the same in your country. That means we the people, you the people, the boys and girls of Myanmar, the young who are angry and feeling helpless and despair and sad, Take your time, roll with it, move with it, take care of your body as much as possible. Take care of your mother and father and your sisters and brothers. Take care of those people whose families are incarcerated. Bond together as a deeper, more deeply rooted family. You're not alone though, you're an inspiration to the world. And let me close here. You're a tapestry of cultures, 135 different ethnicities, a country the size of France or Texas. Every imaginable variation on every religion in the world, and then in the middle of it, there's this golden star for me of Dhamma. Monks and nuns and lay people who thrive on dana, giving, moral integrity. Remember that no matter what, they can take your freedom, but they cannot take your Dhamma. 
You own the Dhamma in Myanmar, in many other countries around the world, are beholding to safeguarding the Dhamma as you have. Yes, there's corruption in every religion. Yes, we would want more from the senior Nayaka Sayadaws in Rangoon. Yes, we would want more from a lot of people around the world. We want more from our country in America. Well, make that more truthful in yourself and keep on keeping on in your revolutionary Dhamma trans-spiritual revolution of the spirit. Although you may be a small country, the very phrase, a revolution of the human mind, a revolution of the human heart, a revolution of the spirit, a struggle, an un unaccomplished at the moment, struggle for freedom, an ongoing struggle for democracy. You're in dynamic action. You are not alone in one heartbeat. Anything could possibly happen to support you in ways that are unexpected. Meanwhile, the world is with you. It may not be in the news in the way in which we want, but it's in the hearts of millions of millions and millions of people around the world. You are not alone. Millions of dollars will come in to support you. Food will come in, medicine will come in, cryptocurrencies will come in, and you have the Dhamma and you have conscience on your side. And personally, as I close today, I will not stop talking until I die in support and doing everything I possibly can to rally global support for you, the good people of Myanmar, my family, my relatives, in democracy, as a human, and in Dhamma. So thank you for the inspiration, and keep on keeping on. Thank you.